it just looks like Twitch has been keeps buffering on me. I gotta figure out if that is due to something on my end or something on their end. certain why Twitch isn't working. I don't know if my bandwidth is just hot garbage today. Not entirely certain why Twitch isn't working. Hot garbage. Alrighty. Well, we're going to get started. Uh, I don't have a ton of time. I'm going to go get my little girl in about an hour and a half. Rearrange the desktop just a little bit. I still got to get a better working solution for my boom mic, which I super love how it sounds but it needs a ton of mic gain and the Streamlabs OBS doesn't seem to offer any mic gain features to it like regular OBS does which is a shame all right so we're starting from the beginning of social psychology I'm actually taking this course for credit although I don't need to for the degree I'm pursuing because I wanted to make sure that I enjoyed the topic, the science, the, the research, um, everything about psychology before really going after it. I've got a bachelor's in business administration. I've got 20 years of business experience, um, but I just wasn't really happy in it anymore. And so I'm looking how last spring I wanted to see how I could uh, pivot my life and into something that I would be happy with. And I didn't want to just jump in without understanding more about what it was I was doing. And so um, I decided to go after just enroll at my uh, local community college and see if I really liked the classes. I figured if I took four or five classes, I'd know if I liked it or not. Um, it's pretty easy to tell if you like something aced all the classes, loved um, the abnormal psychology uh, disorders, the personality psychology. Um, it was fascinating for the child psychology, and I really started to develop a deeper, better understanding about psychology. And um, it turned out I only actually needed one more class to graduate with my associates in psychology, which was kind of funny, because um, I have already fully convinced myself that I am going to go pursue my PhD in it. Um, with a blend of therapy and research, uh, I want to take some of my knowledge of game development uh, and business administration and blend that in with research um, for the field and for the topic and see if I couldn't, you know, make my life better, make other people's lives better, um, understand it more. Who knows? Maybe something I would contribute will actually help humanity. Um, but so that's where we're at. And this is the last class I have to take to actually get my associates in psychology, which I think is kind of amusing, because, um, again, oh, hey, Paul, uh, I don't remember what I was supposed to tag, uh, so I figured I'd just get a stream out there, and then just figure that out afterwards. I think my internet is hot garbage today, because the streaming quality seems to be terrible, and I don't know if it's my wireless, or if it is my, um, 
or if it's Comcast. But either way, just going to plow forward. I've only got about an hour and a half till i got to get Emma from archery. So, um, at any rate, I was going over the text um, over the last, because the class actually only started about two weeks ago, so I haven't plowed that deeply into social psychology, other than what was covered on, uh, you know, briefly covered in other uh, classes over the last semester. And it occurred to me that um, what I was reading has really great information specific to, interestingly enough, uh, game streamers or Twitch streamers, YouTube streamers, Facebook streamers, any streamer whatsoever. Um, because social psychology is basically, uh, in a nutshell, to sum it up, how you interact with how your personality changes depending on the situation you're with. And so um, the social situation, the people with whom, as you can see on the, on the screen there, um, social situation, the people with whom we interact every day, family, friends, um, this part really got to me, the people we see on TV or read or interact with on the web. And so that very specifically also would work into Twitch streamers, YouTube Mixer, that type of thing. Um, because it's how we change who we are based on the, situa the social situation that we're in. And so a lot of people, uh, over the last couple of chapters that uh, I'm already jumping head on, don't really uh, think about how like memory or, or, or cognitive processes work. But it's been very interesting to read just initially how the research shows how we change who we are based on who we're talking to or who we're around, um, what we're doing in a social situation. And so who we think we are isn't necessarily who we portray that we are or how others think we are as well. Um, now, I hate it when professors just read off um, presentations on, on the board, but as I'm not a professor and I don't know this stuff backwards and forwards yet, um, I'm going to do just that. And if anybody's listening, you know, more the better. Hmm. The textbook for this, and I will toss it into, I don't know which chat I can put it in. This text is actually an open source text for anybody. And I'm going to toss it into chat. That is not at all what I wanted. Thank you. Let's try that again, shall we? So if you wanted to learn more about social psychology, ignore that first link. There we go. And I'll put it over in YouTube and I will pop over into Mixer as well. So that way nobody has to necessarily try and type it out. Um, I actually didn't put the right URL in for the mixer. And pop on over to Facebook. We've got them all there. So, um, social psychology is largely a study of social situation. Basically, what I'm going to do is just read read this off, throw some thoughts. If anybody is uh, watching or listening, go ahead and toss them out. I love getting in discussions with this. Um, so, uh, don't. Don't hesitate to interrupt if you need to. Social psychology is largely the study of the social situation. Our social situations create influence. The process through which other people change our thoughts, feelings, and behavior 
or through which we change theirs. Think about that for a second. Social influence is a two-way thing. Am I, am I going to get super obsessed with serial killers, meow? All right, first I have two things to say about that. Um, one, the first and most important response to that, Kristen, is there are only two words that have meow in them, which is meow and home meowner. <laughs> homeowner, but it's got meow in it. So every time you think you're a homeowner, you're really a home meowner. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, sort of, maybe. Nah, not super interested in serial killers. I actually, the stuff that I really liked was from the, um, yeah, adjust my chair a little bit. The stuff that I really liked from abnormal psychology was things like, um, bipolar, depression, anxiety, schizophrenia, dissociative identity disorder that was actually what had made me go uh, and really want to watch split which i talked about briefly on the other um stream which although james mcavoy i think did a really fantastic job uh very textbook job of dissociative identity disorder um the writing really let me down the direction really let me down um it was his performance that really sold it for me but um who knows? I, ideally, I'm going to get into just research and therapy, but I don't know. If, like, the FBI came and they were like, Scott, we need you to help us find the such-and-such such killer, I'd be all like, hell yeah, let's give that a go. Let's throw my name in somewhere else. Yeah, and personality psychology. Abnormal Psych was great. Just thinking about how, um, how fundamentally flawed our understanding of ourselves and everyone else actually is, um, and how, you know, a lot of people, especially me beforehand, I didn't quite realize or think about to the degree that we don't really know ourselves, let alone anybody else. And what we think we know is not always accurate, nor do our genetics predispose us to any certain psychological abnormality or trait. Now, our genes do express themselves depending on stressors that we're experiencing. Our, our life experiences, uh, experiences, especially through childhood, and a lot of that will, depending on what our genetic makeup is and, and our tolerance of such stressors, will influence you know if we get a disorder or how the disorder affects us. Um, but the human mind is just such a fascinating thing, and I never really appreciated the depth that psychology goes into on that. And I know it sounds silly, but I was somebody that very much thought of myself as, as I didn't need therapy, I didn't need help, I didn't need um, anyone to tell me anything that I was already thinking. And just this greater understanding through these classes, um, through these courses at, 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 uh, in college, have really let me understand more of what I didn't really ever know. So, um, how do I feel about Sybil? You know, the funny thing is I've never seen Sybil, and that's on my short list of things that I want to watch. Um, recently rewatched Donnie Darko. That's a really good uh, schizophrenia. So, all right, so social influence, the process through which, we, through which we change other people's feelings or thoughts or they change ours. So as a game streamer, you know, you, depending on how you act on stream, can change, can literally change other people's feelings, thoughts, behaviors. If you, like, take example, um, my daughter watches some... Uh, YouTube videos on Minecraft. She's just obsessed with Minecraft. Absolutely loves it. Although obsessed isn't quite necessarily right. As now I think I have to be a little bit more careful of how I phrase things. Um, if I'm going to potentially be representing a community. Um, she's very highly motivated to continuously... Hey, Cal and Don.
sounds like a great Netflix series, kind of like Numbers. But they come to a game developer for help. Oh, I like that. Yeah, you're talking about... So if the FBI comes to me to develop um, a game simulation in which a serial killer can thrive. Um, yeah, <laughs> that would be pretty cool. Yeah, you go ahead and sell that to Netflix and tell them I'm reasonably young still and modestly charming. So uh, I'd be I'd happy to take on to that role. It would also stroke my ego in ways that I would find delicious. But... Um, yeah, so she watches these Minecraft videos, and in a lot of them, it's guys that are, you know, either mid to late teens uh, or early 20s, and all, uh, almost all that I've watched with her, because I always watch episodes with her, just to, so I know what she's watching, and I understand what she's getting into, and, and what she's excited about, and also to make sure that she's not watching inappropriate content for her age. Um, so that way I can help her understand what she's viewing. Um, but they have a tendency to quite often, no matter what, scream as a reaction. And I hadn't really put that together, what that could be doing to her, until the last month or so. I've noticed that when she has started to develop, that when anything happens in Minecraft or... Um, she pays a little bit of Fortnite, because um, uh, that is kind of her age demographic. Uh, a little bit of Rocket League. We play Paladins. Just chatting? Isn't it IRL? Or is, like, IRL not necessarily the right one either? I believe you. If that's the one like they use, I will put that in. Boop. Change to just chatting. Oh, IRL isn't a thing anymore. Okay. I feel you. Good looking out. Thank you, sir. Um. So, I realized that she was mimicking these guys that she was watching on Minecraft and her capacity to actually handle situations was being diminished because of the people that she was watching, those influencers. Now, that word influencers is pretty important here because that's what social media is. It's an influencing of you to play a certain game, watch a show, buy a product, all of that. There's, you know, this, this is not just entertainment for the sake of entertainment. This is influencing you. Whether or not you want to accept it is irrelevant. Um, and so she was having a tendency to scream and shout over any little thing. And not like in an angry, bratty, fit-throwing way. That's just not her. That's not her personality. But in like a very excited, happy, Oh my God, this is so great! And I just thought, I don't know if that's really what I want for her. And so now I'm being a bit more careful. And I'm explaining to her, you know careful how you react because um, how you react is going to be watched by others and how they react is going to change depending on that so for example um think of think of uh, introverts you know oftentimes introverts really just want to quietly passively be part of a social situation introverts don't necessarily mean that they don't want to be social it just means that the way that they handle social interactions is different than extroverts um and so we oftentimes see you know if we've got friends that are quiet or shy which is quite obviously the opposite of me um standing in a corner and i'm guilty of this i i've, I've come to realize too um standing in a corner just kind of observing and enjoying themselves and we kind of try and drag them in Oh, you really need to do this with us. You're going to love this. You're going to like it. Oh, be part of this. Be part of this. Be part of this. Do it my way. Um, and so now what we're doing is basically trying to force, you know, good-naturedly um, force people to not be who they are, which is also going to then force them 
to internally adjust how they want to react with us and will they even show up to something with us again. I know there's plenty of friends that I have enjoyed spending time with in the past that after certain interactions with them, I just don't have a lot of desire to be around them anymore. So social influence, the process through which other people change our thoughts and feelings, behaviors, and through which we change theirs. Um, the example that's given in the text here is the Hal Bopp suicide. Um, and that was earlier on in the text. And just in case you guys either were not around or uh, don't remember it, back in, um, I don't want to skip around on the PDF on there because I don't remember what page. It might just be actually the page right above it. Stanford Prison Experiment. Um, oh, here it is. The mass cult of 39, or mass suicide of 39 cult members. 39 cult members. March 26, 1997. People were found dead in a house on a hilltop in San Diego, California. The people were members of a cult and were part of a carefully orchestrated suicide that involved sedatives, vodka, and plastic bags. 21 women, 18 men, and they had come from California from all over. Most of the victims were in their 40s. I'll try not to think on that too much. Um, but ranged from 26 to 72. This was the Heaven's Gate cult where, um, and I haven't read much on it other than I remember it being in the news at the time. I would have been 21, 22. Uh, I remember hearing about it at the news, but the internet was not really a big thing then. Um, you know, it was still dial-up, very few broadband. It, the, the news sources weren't like they are today. Um, but there, no, I haven't. I, should I put that on the list? Is it like, you know, I'm gonna, because I bet that's fascinating to see what was going through their minds. Kristen, you, you're going to need to join me on every one of these streams because it seems like you've got a wealth of information on messed up things. <laughs> um, let's see. So Sybil is on the short list. Hal Bop. Suicide Diaries. Um, but they all just organized their stuff. They thought, for whatever reason, that there was UFOs hiding behind a, a comet that was going to be flying by and that they all committed suicide when the comet was supposed to be closest so that way they could go visit the aliens hiding on the other side, traveling on the other side of the comet. The house was immaculate. They all had their IDs. Nobody was, um, will you take classes with me? I'm going after my PhD. It'd be great. We can do it together. Um, they took poison mixed with applesauce or pudding and they died. Wasn't drug crazy. Wasn't you damn kids with your loud music and your drugs. It was adults 26 to 72. They had a $5 bill and some quarters in their pockets. That's kind of weird. Did they think it was like money for the ferryman? Were they crossing the river sticks? No blood. Nine millimeter pistol that wasn't used. It was packed away. They thought they were going to a better place. That is social psychology. I am actually super interested now that you bring that up, Kristen, um, to kind of see what they were thinking. Kurt Lewin, which if you've ever taken a psychology class, um, Lewin, you'll see, is like the name on all of the textbooks or referenced so many times um, from the 50s and 60s, I believe, is when he did a lot of the early groundbreaking research. Um, he created a variable for social psychology research, which is the person situation interaction. Behavior equals the function of people or the characteristics of the person and the social situation. Now you might say, well, Scott, why do we have, uh, it's on YouTube. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I just spelled YouTube on my notes.
Collin, yeah. You know what, that's a, that is a great point. There's a lot of coverage on that for a while. The cult mentality is an incredibly interesting subject. It isn't that dissimilar to why they believe some young American men end up joining groups like ISIS. True, there's no reason American men, boys, women, I mean, I've, I've heard on the news uh, girls joining ISIS as well, and you'd be like, why in the world would you do that? They treat women like slaves, like just breeding cattle. Um, why would you ever do that? Uh, but now... Hey, Jerome. You... <laughs> not, not everything is for everybody. Um, there were plenty of classes that I absolutely hated that I had to plow through. So, um... But welcome to the stream. But think about this for a second, Callan. Um... And you know what I should do? I just realized this may or may not pop the chat up. I apologize if this looks really wonky. Okay, that's not it. Shouldn't that be there? Where is my chat? That should be there. Huh. I'll worry about that later. The chat should have been showing up. Um, yeah, it should be above it. So, sorry about that. Um, think for a second. You immediately jumped, Callan, to joining ISIS, right? Now think for a second, what global phenomenon has happened in the last year that's very near and dear to Twitch and Mixer and YouTube? Go ahead. First person that gives me the correct answer will get a uh, fake digital cookie that won't even be digital, just me, me saying cookie really loudly. What social phenomenon? No, uh, Jerome, that wasn't what I was thinking of. Globally, it's Fortnite. I have witnessed firsthand how many young teen, preteen, tween, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50 year olds have solely for the reason of wanting to be part of something. <laughs> Kristen, yeah. Um, you know, I don't know if I'd say that's a latest cult. I think. Uh, the, the the election having good old President uh, <clears throat> Cheeto in charge has brought out um, the worst in people both on Republicans and Democrats and independents but specifically for this what I'm referencing is Fortnite it's a free to play game that people are jumping on and I've heard so many people say, ah, oh, this isn't that good and want to play something else. But then they go back just to play it with their friends. That's social influencing right there. Now think if there wasn't YouTube, if there wasn't Twitch, if there wasn't Mixer, if there wasn't Facebook. Would Fortnite have survived the game launch without that social, social media influencing? It's taken, they did... I think I read uh, over two and a half, three billion in revenue on a free-to-play game. I don't want to say that's insanity. I don't want to say that's crazy, but that's, but that's that's specifically what um, social influencing is. It is I am somebody. Uh, it is saying I am somebody that really likes this thing, and you should like this thing too with me. Come on, do this thing, do this thing, do this thing. Oh, I don't want to. I don't want to. But I'm going to anyway. Um, 
It's really quite interesting. <laughs> but uh, the power of the social influence. People are uh, people are born with skills that allow them to successfully interact with others in their social world. Newborns are able to recognize faces and to respond to human voices. Young children learn language and develop friendships with other children. I've seen that firsthand. Um, I've watched as a eight month old grow into a fifteen month old, and he just smiles and giggles. Um, and I'm a bit more awake for this child's development than I was for my own because I was so tired when my own little girl was was born. Um, yeah, Colin, peer pressure is very strong. The psychological feedback loops. Now, the one that I had read the most of, and I'm going to derail every time I see some really good feedback or really good chat like this, because this is why I love psychology. It is so thrilling to try and understand how people work and get into the meat. Like, I feel like my fingers are just tendrils going into the brains of people. The more I learn about this, the more I want to learn. But... I remember hearing uh, about, I believe it was League of Legends, and this was in 2013, if I remember correctly. Um, League of Legends had the most toxic player base of any. And it, now it shares a lot of similarities to Fortnite in terms of, you know, free-to-play game, made billions in revenue. Um, you do see a highly young, oftentimes very toxic player base. And um, what League did back in 2013, 2014, somewhere in there, is they used a term called cognitive dissonance. And at the end of every match, they put a, a, a feedback system of, you know, when they start doing reporting and, and uh, community reporting and player feedback and that kind of thing. And one of the things for cognitive dissonance was they asked you if you felt that you did, if you were a good player, if you did your best um, while playing, were you a good community member um, while playing? And I think that's brilliant. Because they weren't trying to preach, they weren't trying to lecture. They weren't trying to say, don't do this, don't do this, although specifically that was the end goal. What they wanted to do was make the players individually think, get into that subconscious there, so that way maybe the next time they play, they didn't have to tick, they didn't have to lie about checking the box of, yes, I was a good player, yes, I was a good community member. Because people's brains hate just hate doing something that is opposite of what their beliefs are. And that's cognitive dissonance right there. I know I was toxic, but I'm going to say, yes, I was a good community person anyway. People hated that. So then the next time, Maybe they were a little less because they didn't want to have to, and then a little less. And then what they did see, and I remember reading specifically about this, they did see a notable marked drop in toxicity. Now, obviously you can't get rid of it entirely, um, which is too bad because there's no accountability when it comes to online gaming. You can do or say, and you know, with a free-to-play game, it's so easy to get around a, a ban or a block. Sure, you lose your money in the skins or whatever, but... Uh, there isn't really any true accountability. All right. Young children learn language, develop friendships with other children. I, I, I've watched this toddler, this baby, turn into a toddler, turn into a, I guess still just toddler. Um, and he uses social interaction all of the time. His smiles, his giggles, watching him flip over, watching him crawl, watching him uh, try and get attention, watching him be social. 
also thought it was interesting on that topic for child psychology that, um, and this was a little bit sad, but it's, you know, human nature. Probably other animals exhibit it too, I would imagine. Um, but we learned that typically, by and large, it looks like, research indicated that parents treated cute babies better than they did ugly babies. And in the animal kingdom, they showed that really cute looking animals when they're infants typically get more attention from the parents. So the rounder faced babies with the big eyes and the perfectly shaped heads and a little bit of hair and a cute smile and a cute laugh, you know, and no skin blemishes and no abnormalities, regardless of if the parent is a good person or not, oftentimes resulted in more attention being lavished upon the cute looking children. Isn't that, isn't that crazy? People don't even think that. Why, why would you ever think, oh, I didn't love my second child as much as my first because it wasn't as cute. Adolescents become interested in sex and destined to fall in love. Most adults marry and have children, and most people usually get along with others. People have these particular characteristics because we have all been similarly shaped through human evolution. Social skills for survival. Keen eyesight, physical strength, resistance to disease, of course, helped our ancestors to survive. So too did the tendency to engage in social behaviors. We quickly make judgments about other people. Yes, we do. Schemas. Help other people who are in need. Enjoy working together in social groups because these behaviors help our ancestors to adapt or pass along their genes to the next generation. Our extraordinary social skills are primarily due to our large brains and social intelligence that provide us with is that a dangling participle there? That they provide us with. Oh, I missed a word. That's my bad. Just skimming it a little bit. Yeah, think about that. Humans are highly social groups as much as a lot of people want to be. Um, thanks for stopping by, Paul. Um, tonight, I'm going to be working more on it. I did commit that change to the zombie bite where I attached the grab and the kill cam to the skeletal mesh. And I did a, a build. Everything worked fine. Um, it does. Uh, I am going to move so that way I think it's going to help fix it. Two things. I'm going to move the box, the trigger box. So that way it's flush with his back so you can't really bump in. It, it's harder to run into the back of a zombie or the side to help fix him the mesh collision. And then I'm just going to go through and make sure all of them are rotated in a way that also stops the mesh collisions against like a wall or a gate or, or whatever. Um, but I did commit that already and the build was uh, successful again. Earlier today I was trying to fix a, go through a particle problem and I got really frustrated. Had to eat and do some reading and take a nap. So, I'll be getting back onto that. Four o'clock. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Back on topic. Humans are highly social. If we were not, we probably would not have been the dominant species on the planet. We work together to farm. We work together to hunt. There's no, you know, it's so unlikely that one human with very rudimentary set of weapons is going to take down, uh, uh, you know, an apex predator. But you get a group of humans. It's like wolves. You get that pack. But for humans, we also got the ability to farm. We got the ability to climb and to stand upright. We got the ability to work together. So lots of benefits. Our large brains. The assumption that human nature, including much more social behavior, is determined largely by our evolutionary past is known as evolutionary adaptation. Fitness refers to the extent to which having given characteristic to having a given characteristic helps individuals survive and reproduce at a higher rate. Social species reproduce more. Fitter organisms pass their genes 
more successful with later generations, making the character characteristics that produce fitness more likely to become part of the organism's nature than our characteristics and that do not produce fitness. The emotion of jealousy has survived over time in men because men who experience jealousy are more fit than men who do not. According to this idea, the experience of jealousy leads men to protect their mates and guard against rivals, which increases their reproductive success. That's a good... You know, everybody usually thinks uh, jealousy is a terrible thing, right? Evolutionary speaking, it means you get to keep your mate who you get to keep producing offspring with. Because if you weren't necessarily jealous, your mate is going to go potentially. Your mate could potentially hook up with some other dude and your genes don't get to keep moving on. So people early on, humans... If they did not, the ones that were not necessarily jealous, and there were not social constraints like we have today, uh, or cultural norms, quite possibly, if you're just like, oh, I don't care, she can just sleep with whomever. Well, his child doesn't get born. Doesn't get to have five, six, ten kids. Who then has the trait of jealousy of just me, just me, just me. Although our biological makeup prepares us to be human beings, it is important to remember that our genes do not really determine who we are. Rather, genes provide us with our human characteristics, and these characteristics give us the tendency to behave in a human way. This goes back to what I was saying a lot earlier in the stream, which was my misunderstanding early on of thinking that our genetic makeup is what determined our psychological structure or potentially abnormalities or disorders or personality um, and come to learn that yes it plays a key role in 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 uh, determining that but it is still correlational not necessarily causational because even in twin studies identical twin studies are are fantastic because they give you the best possible psychological base for doing a uh, doing research on psychology because you have identical genes identical 100 percent identical if you have an identical twin not fraternal but identical twins and what they found was schizophrenia dissociative identity disorder although it had a high propensity to happen to both at 50 percent if one of the twins, identical twins, had schizophrenia or DID, that the other would as well. But now think about that for a moment. 50% is not 100%, which means that half of the time, the identical twin did not get the psychological disorder. So genes, our genetics, don't determine who we are but they do lay a foundation for it. In our experiences with our genetics is what actually shapes our psychology and our personalities. Kristen, so what, uh, so did I land on nature or nurture? Uh, it's both. There's no way it's one or the other. Um, serial killer children, sorry. Children of serial killers don't end up necessarily being serial killers. Um, you know, if it was all nature, and these are these are very extreme examples, but if it was all nature, then every child that was ever molested would grow up to be a child molester. Um, and every person that has schizophrenia or DID or depression or anxiety or, you know... Yeah, subtraits. You know, any of those big abnormal uh, disorders, um, if I have them, then my children should have them. Um, so it, it's, it's a combo of both. It really is. And it looked like uh, on, the, on the chapter about dissociative identity disorder, um, so much of it discussed about how a lot of that split personality is what it used to be called 
is due to trauma that happens over the course of your childhood. It could even be one thing, but it could be, you know, a childhood of things. Yeah, uh, identical twins. They can have completely different subtraits. You could have an introvert and an extrovert. Who, you know, we don't really know causationally what causes people to be who they are. All we can do is continue to collect data over time. But now we have computer modeling. Um, one of the things I'm very excited about, I want to get into VR development for both therapy and research for psychology. Because one of the things that popped in my head was, what would it be like if you had somebody with DID and you had each personality to describe to them what they look like, um, and you modeled that personality, because the whole goal for therapy for DID is to make the person whole again, not to uh, eliminate the other personalities, but to actually bring them all into one personality. Um, oh, I get you, Kristen. Hmm, I'll have to check that out. I had not heard that uh, they are anything other than identical. Um, what 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 would happen if you recorded their voice speaking and 3D modeled it to make them look like they say they look like, and then put them in a VR world where they could actually interact with their other personality? Stuff like that fascinates me. Now, eth ethically, I'd obviously want to discuss something like that with people that are in the know, but there is so many potential. So much potential. Evolutionary adaptation has provided us with two fundamental motives that guide us and help us lead productive and effective lives. One of these motivations relies relates to the self, the motivation to protect and enhance the self and the people who are psychologically close to us, who we care about. The other relates to social situation, the motivation to affiliate with, accept, and be accepted by others, self-concern, and other concerns. The most basic tenets of all living organisms and the focus of the first human motivation is the desire to protect and enhance one's own life and the lives of the people who are close to us. That seems like a no-brainer. Humans are motivated to find food and water, shelter, keep safe from harm. We can only survive if we meet these. Looking at Maslow there, looking at your hierarchy. The desire to maintain and enhance itself also leads us to do the same for our relatives People we're genetically close to, human beings, other animals. Uh, human beings, like other animals, exhibit kin selection. Strategies that favor the reproductive success of one's relatives. Sometimes even at the cost of the individual's own survival. So, parents do that. Uh, I don't know how many times my father has helped my brother, sister, and I out. Potentially at the cost of his own well-being heck we do it as any parent does that the lack of sleep to make sure our children survive multiple jobs food shelter according to evolutionary principles kin selection occurs because these behaviors that enhance the fitness of relatives and if they lower the fitness of the individual self they nevertheless increase the survival of the group as a whole We care about those who share our genes. And interestingly enough, if you think about it, we are probably are experiencing a cultural renaissance right now with the phenomenon of like adoption. Um, because we have no genetic need, need, not want, to help children that are not our genetic offspring. It's really quite wonderful what the human mind can do. In addition to our kin, we desire to protect, improve, and enhance well-being of our in-group. Those whom we view, our in-group is, those whom we view as being similar and important to us and whom we share special or share close social connections, even if they don't share our genes. Hey, that's a little poignant right there. You help your friends move your furniture. Oh my God, I just moved to a new house. And a uh, buddy helped me move very heavy stuff. 
People help you study, people help you relax. Don't always help strangers, but you do it for your friends because you care about them. Evolutionary, that's throwback. The people we were closest to were those, usually those we were related to. And so nowadays, the people we feel close to, our friends, are getting that benefit. Oh, geez, the time. texted me. She's on her way to archery. Uh, a new consumer's energy bill. All right. Um, I'm going to look real quick. I think I've, I've got to wrap this up within the next five or ten minutes. So I want to see where a good stopping place is. Actually, I think it's right after this other concern. Yeah, because that is the next topic. Although we are primarily concerned with the survival of ourselves, our kin, and those we feel we are similar and important to us, we also desire to connect with and be accepted by other people. More generally, the goal of other concern. We live in communities, we work in groups, we worship together. Some do. And we may play together on sports teams and through clubs. The feeling with other people, strangers, has met the, met the fundamental goal of finding a romantic partner with whom we can have children. It all comes back to them babies. Gotta get them babies. Our connections with others also provide us with opportunities that we would not have had on our own. Go to the grocery store to buy milk or eggs. Hire a carpenter to build a house. We can have others do work that we can't necessarily do ourselves and we can do for others. It's a mutual cooperation benefit for us and the people around us. What the other conserved motive means is that we do not always put ourselves first. Being human also involves caring about helping and cooperating with other people. Although our genes are themselves selfish, damn you genes, making sure we eat and reproduce. This does not mean that individuals always are. The survival of our own genes may be improved by helping others. So we help others, we survive longer. I know that's for certain. Just as birds and other animals may give call out alarms to help other an animals to indicate that a predator is nearby, humans engage in altruistic behaviors in which they help others at a potential cost to themselves. How many times, you know, have you helped somebody else even when you didn't want to? You didn't need to, you didn't have to, but you did it anyway. In short, human beings behave morally towards others. They understand that it is wrong, some do, to harm other people without a strong reason for doing so. And they display compassion and altruism towards others. As a result, negative behaviors towards others, such as bullying, cheating, stealing, aggression, are unusual, unexpected, and socially disapproved. Sort of. The aggression, cheating... And bullying seems to be on the rise, especially with social media, which I make the huge argument, although a little hypocritical because I'm on broadcasting on four kinds of social media today. But it has such a great propensity to do harm because of the selfish reasons people use it of look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. Not how may I help you, but rather how will you help me? That kind of bothers me to a degree, and it's a good reason why I'm not really on Facebook anymore. Um, but the fundamental human motivation of other concern does mean that hostility and violence are the exception rather than the rule. Hooray for morals. Sometimes the goals of self-concern and other concern go hand in hand. When we fall in love with another person, it is about... It is in part about a concern for connecting with someone else, but it is also about self-concern. Falling in love makes us feel good about ourselves, and we volunteer to help others who are in need. It is in part for their benefit, but also for us. I fall in love to feel good, but also to help take care of others. We feel 
good when other when we help others at other times however the goal of self-concern and other concern conflict imagine that you're walking across campus and you see a man with a knife threatening another person do you intervene or do you turn away in this case your desire to help the other person other concern is in direct conflict with your desire to protect yourself from the danger posed by the situation self-concern and you must decide which goal to put first what would you do I'm not going to go into the next section yet, just because I've got to go get M's. Um, I know what I would do, mainly because I've been in similar situations, um, and I attribute these things to my parenting and upbringing by my mom and dad did a good job I think um, I have seen groups of people um, example when I was 22 23 I was working at JC Penney selling suits at the Meridian Mall and through the mall entrance into the mall hall <laughs> lots of words there um, there's a group of probably five or six boys, teenagers, that were shoving and screaming and picking on this other kid. And um, if anything, I'm a damn fool for getting involved in stuff that I probably shouldn't. That whole self-concern versus other concern. But I rushed out, pushed them off of the kid. Now, it was quite a bit bigger being, you know, seven to ten years older than them and I was wearing a full suit because I sold suits and so looked like more of a figure of authority and I pushed them aside and all oh, the end result was they did leave the kid alone no that isn't uh Kristen that happened about four years before this incident um I did get them to leave the kid alone but uh they they peeled off and and left and then the kid ran off kind of behind them trailing. So I suspect it was kind of the outcast of the group that hung around them because he wanted their attention and their friendship. But they were being, I mean, they were punching him. They threw him into the wall, that kind of stuff. And so I feel good about helping out. But the amusing thing was um, when I ran out there, kind of like the brain was just firing of gotta go help gotta go help gotta go help gotta go save and i ran out there and i screamed in my head i wanted to say break it up um and i don't remember what the other phrase was but it had the word down in it and i got out there and i screamed break it down <laughs> oops as if it was some kind of, uh, you know, club scene. <laughs> uh, they just heard, they just saw some, uh, you know, six foot one dude in a suit walking at him and shouting at him. So they broke it up. They did not drop the base, which is unfortunate. They did not break it down. <laughs> but they did uh, leave the kid alone and off they went. But uh, with that little anecdote, I've got to end the stream. I didn't realize how quickly this was going to go. I'm actually pretty happy and surprised. Thank you, Kristen. Thank you, Paul. Jerryon, Jerryon51 over on Mixer. Callan on Facebook. Um, I don't see anybody else. If I missed you, apologies. Uh, I'm going to be doing more of these kind of streams. Uh, as I find it fascinating, and the discourse is really quite lovely. So, everybody, take care. Have a great weekend. I hope it's either warm where you are or going to be warmer soon. Um, 